That's all I thought it was. But now that I know that you know the pesticides and and fertilizers that they use on our crops are f full of fluoride as well. I mean, you're getting much more fluoride from the outer leaves of a lettuce and the outer skin of a potato, grapes, um, raisins, obviously, and most crops. Uh, yeah, so we're getting like getting a lot of shit basically in our food, and then with meat, obviously the cows, whatever pigs, they drink presumably tap water. I don't think they get mineral water, are they? Unless they're drinking rainwater from puddles, but don't know about that either. I don't think they allow too many puddles because of mosquitoes. So they're drinking tap water. They're also getting shed loads of antibiotics oh yeah my point was about the organic versus yes so i didn't realize that uh the or, the organic was quite so different so that if they haven't used fertilizers and pesticides then this food and if they've watered it well i suppose they might have to water it but generally maybe just the rain waters it so then yeah then you are getting good food and this is what makes sense to me because I always knew that, well I always felt that they don't want to kill everyone on the planet. They want to, they want to keep the in crowd. So it probably is other human beings that have done this, that are doing this. And um, they've just had knowledge for a long time. And so they're going to, keep, they want to keep some obviously. And all this stuff with the Illuminati and Illuminati signs keep those people in the know. So organic was probably something for them. We're going organic now, which means the rest of the food is going to be dodgy. <laughs> well, I advise anyone with their food to take off the outer layers. Because I think the worst bit is the pesticides. Uh, there's a lot of fluoride there, and a lot of fluoride compounds, and some of these are the worst, you know. Um, so take off the outer leaves, peel, peel things, peel them heavily, because you can't wash it off, it's too sticky. But what you should know is that um, these fluoride ions will, on their own, will go and sort of block your chakra. This is my understanding. Um, but if you've got... Um, things in your body, calcium, vitamin C, magnesium, they will bond with the fluoride and you'll poo them out quite happily. Um, but other, I think sodium, I think there's a bit of a unsurety on sodium whether that's okay or not, because sodium seems to be absolutely everything. It's salt, I suppose. Um, yeah, and Europe table salt, there's your fluoride there. So... Uh, aluminium, very bad. And um, if if the fluoride ion goes with an aluminium particle and becomes aluminium fluoride, whatever, that's nasty. And by the way, just to let you know, fluoride is basically this real toxic thing. Um, it just bonds with anything. Uh, so you know, it it will bond with whatever's there. I don't know if it has a preference or not. So the thing to do is to make sure you've got some nutrition in your body, calcium, vitamin C, magnesium, don't know where you get magnesium from, make sure you've got that in your body and then if you consume fluoride it's it's not it's not likely going to hurt you so much. But you really want to cut down on your fluoride intake and fuck knows what else they put in the water. Remember when we're talking, we're talking fluoride, we're always talking parts per million. So apparently on the outer leaf of a lettuce you've got 180 parts per million, which is really, really high. And they claim the safe levels to have in water is what well, was one part per million, now they've upped it to 1.5 parts per million. But you're drinking a lot more, you know, when you consume water you're consuming large quantities. So if you talk about a raisin that might have 45, 44 parts per million, you know, raisin's quite small, isn't it? Because uh, the grapes, again, they spray the uh, spray pesticides on the grapes. It's really sticky, you can't get it off. And um, it's difficult to avoid, so the main thing is to make sure you have nutrition. 
And this I see this one thinking that the rich people there they're, they're gonna be or the people who are in the in crowd of the whoever's doing this, they're gonna sort of sort of know this, they'll probably eat all organic food. You know, I suppose if someone said to me, right, there's only gonna we're only gonna live let one million people live on this planet from now on. You're in the million people. But you better not tell anyone else. If you tell anyone else, then we're going to kill you. You know, I suppose I'd probably go along with it. Luckily, I don't have to face that decision. I, I say luckily because I, I wouldn't want that <laughs> dilemma. God, that would be weird. So, anyway, I'm in the, um, I'm in the masses here, along with everyone else. I'm not scared. Yeah, bring it on. I'm, you know, I'm happier each time I find find out something. I mean, the listening to the I listened to the BBC Radio Four. I've been listening to it for years. I thought, you know, I thought they'd be covering all the angles. I suppose about a year since a year or two, I've been coming to the conclusions that no, certainly not getting everything at all. You've got to come to YouTube for that. Uh, God bless YouTube. Yeah, you've got a lot of wrong information here and a lot of people's opinions. But you just have to sort of try and understand everything for yourself. Okay, to the warning. What they've been doing the last few years. Lowering our immune systems. Oh, well, they might have started this before with antibiotics. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, by the way, when I was talking about cows, the meat we eat, you know, they drink the water, but they're all on antibiotics, all these cows. So even if you try and avoid antibiotics, you end up getting it through the meat you eat. It's a bit of a pain. Um, yes, so the warning. Weakening our immune systems. The last three years, they've been spraying chemicals into the skies, into the atmosphere. Okay, we know it's chemtrails, a lot of people dispute it, saying, you know, contrast, but it's hard to remember, but I do not remember having those long, long, long clouds coming out of aeroplanes. I remember contrails, they go across, they leave a bit, and it goes away. I remember foggy days, I remember clear days. But I don't remember waking up in the morning, going outside, blue sky, load of planes crisscross ahead, all leaving long white streaks, and then by 10 o'clock, it's just all a haze. I don't remember that. I don't, and then sort of, you know, sometimes in the evening or whatever, you know, I sort of outside and I, there's a breathing in sharp, it's like, you can tell there's something in the air and that's actually when I go inside and keep the windows shut for a bit. Although I always sleep with the window open. I cannot sleep with the window closed. So what they're doing is this like aluminium dust that they're spraying into the cloud, into the sky. Now I think there's two reasons that they've done this. And I think one reason is to mask the strength of the sun the last few years. Um, we've had quite mild winters, we've had crap summers, because it's just been cloudy, but there's been no rain. And that was the thing that I was finding funny, it's like, oh, we've got all these clouds, but there's no rain. And, well, we've got some rain now, I mean, that's good. So, but also this aluminium and barium, I think, as well, eventually drifts back down to the ground and we're breathing it in. And that will weaken our immune systems. So here we go. They're making us depressed, unenlightened, unhappy with the fluoride. They've now weakened our immune systems. Then the next step is to release the virus. You'll have all these depressed people, 
and obviously depression can lead to anger and then they release a virus biological weapon that's what it will be I've only just thought that now at the Olympics it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a dirty bomb it's going to be dirty but it's going to be a biological weapon I think and then they'll say, well, probably hand out some tablets. Well, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. But I think it's going to be this summer. I think all the hype about December 2012, I think that's um, a smokescreen. I think that's misinformation too. To make people think, you know, they're not going to worry about things up until the late stage of December. And by then we'll already have had what we're going to have. I don't know about Nibiru. Nibiru makes sense to me in some ways. I sort of believe in a planet X, but I think if there was anything coming, we would have definitely seen it by now. Pictures were getting on YouTube, it's nothing. It was supposed to come round in May, June time. Well, it didn't, did it? Yes, it did, and we didn't notice it possible. Something is going on with the sun though. I mean, either the sun's getting stronger or or it's the global warming effect but my god when the sun comes out and it's clear it is hot. I mean March we had some sunny days in March and I was wearing my shorts straight away it was like summer it was like a nice summer's day then and then we had the hot spell in May and that was hot. It was uncomfortable hot it wasn't nice. You didn't want to, I didn't want to be in the sun for too long at all. It was too strong. I mean, it's okay probably if you're on a beach and you can dip in the pool or whatever, but not when you're working and stuff. So, I think I've um, summed it up. That um, I think something's going to happen during the Olympics because of some dreams I had a few years ago.